Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's that time again. The Game Award nominations just came out this morning, and today we're going to do our typical tradition. We're going to vote in every category what my favorite game was in that category. I always enjoy doing this because I feel like it makes a great debate, great conversation. Also, you get to see from my point of view why I like this game and why I don't like this other game. So I'm very excited. I did already see the nominations. Let's just go ahead and get right into the voting. So there's going to be some categories that I have no idea what I'm voting for. And this is going to be one of them, the eSports stuff. So I'll be honest with you, I have never watched any of these eSport events. So I'm just going to... I'm gonna go with PUBG Mobile because I feel like it's funny that there's a PUBG Mobile esports event. Like, who would want to do PUBG Mobile? Who decided, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make fun of the PUBG Mobile fans, but like, to have an event off that? <laughs> okay, now this is more of our topic right here. This one's a good one to talk about. So obviously we have Elden Ring as the one of people's most anticipated games right now i don't care about elden ring i'm gonna be honest with you it just looks like dark souls to me that's not a bad thing it's just i feel like with what the game was how much anticipation it was supposed to be like something new it doesn't look like anything new to me it looks like just dark souls painted over with elden ring and i thought it was going to be something way better than that uh, but it's not an anticipated game for me. We have God of War Ragnarok is one of the nominations here. And I'm excited for the game, but I'm not super pumped for it because there's other stuff coming out that I'm surprised wasn't nominated in this category. Uh, but that's definitely a contender for me. Horizon Forbidden West. Now here's the thing with that. Horizon, I haven't played much of Horizon on my PlayStation already, the original one, so I'm not too much interested into the sequel, uh, just because, you know, I haven't played much of the first, which I intend on beating before Forbidden West comes out, that way I can play both, uh, because Horizon, that game looks beautiful, and, you know, PlayStation exclusive, usually a lot of the PlayStation exclusives are pretty good, and I do think that's gonna be one of the like big contenders that might win game of the year next year i think all these titles that we're looking at in the most anticipated game category has a very strong chance of being nominated next year for game of the year 2022 zelda breath of the wild i mean who isn't excited for the sequel of breath of the wild that is going to be very exciting we still are so confused as to what's happening in the game the story we know so much little about it, and we're still very excited for it. And Starfield is actually on the similar boat. I'm interested to see exactly what this is going to be, because we don't know much about Starfield. We saw a little bit, and that was it. Like, we can't tell what this game is going to be. But with everything said and done, I gotta go with the sequel to Breath of the Wild. It just makes sense. I'm a Nintendo channel. Obviously, I was going to vote that, but this was actually a hard category because God of War Ragnarok, I'm really excited for. I'm excited for Starfield, but like, I don't know if I'm going to play it. I'm just interested to see what the gameplay is going to be and how it's going to be and all of that. So this one was definitely a harder category for me to vote in. Best Debut Indie. Okay, I'll be honest. I didn't play any of these. Although, uh... Sable, I saw the trailer for this, uh, I think was it was a Gamescon that this was at, or was it the Summer Games Fest? I saw this at one of Jeff Keighley's events. This looked very interesting to me, like really, really interesting. Um, I definitely want to play this. Uh, I'm just going to vote that just because that looked really interesting to me when I saw the trailer. Content Creator of the Year. Okay, I hate to be such a hater right now, but I have an issue with this. We went over this last time, and... I don't know who decides who gets nominated for this, but there needs to be separation from streamer and content creator. There is a difference between the two. Those two need to be separated. We are seeing them do almost a repeat. I will say they did do a tiny bit better, but even then they still picked a crap list. And if any of these people that are nominated watching, which you're not, but I'm not trying to roast you guys in general, it's just these lists don't make sense dream like why I, I don't even know who all these other guys are i'm just gonna be honest the only one i know is dream and i still don't even watch a video of dream it doesn't make sense that 
this list just doesn't make sense. There should be a streamer of the year and content creator of the year. That way we can see some of these other content creators that deserve to be nominated on this list. For example, Scott the Waz should have been nominated for this year. That dude put in so much work in his content this year that it's quite amazing everything he pulled off. Not to mention the TV show and all that. It, it amazes me that last year he wasn't nominated and this year he isn't nominated again. So actually, I'm not going to vote in any of this because no offense, none of these guys really deserve it, especially not Dream. Best multiplayer game. All right. So this one is going to be really hard between two of them because I have a lot of fun with two of these games on here. So the only two I've played was Black for Blood and then Monster Hunter Rise. Both amazingly fun multiplayer games. So here's the thing with this. This is how I'm going to look at it. Back for Blood is boring by yourself. The only way you can really enjoy this game is if you're playing it with friends. And this category is for best multiplayer. Monster Hunter Rise, I can have fun playing single player and multiplayer. I feel like this category is specifically for multiplayer, and since Back for Blood can only do one of those things, I have to go with Back for Blood being the best multiplayer game. Because Monster Hunter Rise can be single player and multiplayer. So can Back for Blood, it's just boring and just not fun with single player on Back for Blood. Best sports slash racing game. Okay, I didn't play any of these. <laughs> um, although Riders Republic was something I was wanting to play because that looked pretty cool from what Ubisoft showed at E3. So I'm just gonna vote that. I didn't play any of these. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, you didn't play Forza? I haven't played Forza. I will eventually play the new Forza game though. Best family game. Okay, this one's actually gonna be a little bit difficult. Uh, first off, it's very interesting to see this list because if you guys remember last year, all of the games that was nominated in this category was for Nintendo. Nintendo was the only one that had games in this category. So we actually have It Takes Two on here, which is an EA game. So it, it's interesting to see another game on here that's not Nintendo. Now, in terms of the best family game, let's go buy them one by one. WarioWare Get It Together is a great multiplayer game, but I wouldn't say it's a family game, if that makes sense. I feel like this is a game that you would really enjoy best with friends. I don't feel like family would enjoy this. I'm just going to be honest because WarioWare isn't for everyone. It Takes Two is kind of a similar situation, although I actually know that is that game is better for family because I wouldn't pick It Takes Two to play with a friend. I would play that with a close family member or something like that because of what the game actually is. So It Takes Two is definitely a good family game. New Pokemon Snap, I'm going to say, is not a family game. I don't even think that game has multiplayer, to be honest. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I don't remember that having multiplayer. I would say this is not a family game at all. Uh, I mean, I guess if kid-friendly, is that what they mean in this whole genre of category? I, I wouldn't say that's a family game because you're not going to have family across the couch be like, oh wow son, what are you playing? Pokemon Snap. They're not going to be interested in that, I feel like, me personally. Mario Party Superstars, now that's a great family game and also multiplayer game. That's a really fun game. That would be a close contender. And then it's a Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. 3D World, as I've said before, is one of the best multiplayer and family games of all time. I've said that every year, and I've always said when Super Mario 3D World would get online play, it would be a huge game, people would be playing the multiplayer, there would be so much fun there. And I was right, everyone had fun with the online multiplayer. That being said, I also said it was the best family Mario game. Because of how they did the multiplayer in Super Mario 3D World is why it's one of the best family games in my opinion. Because you have that crown that you get to flex every level if you get enough points. If these levels are so beautiful, the levels can be so chaotic with multiplayer. There is a lot of fun to be had in family. So with that being said, I think Mario Party Superstars is a very close contender for this topic, but I feel like there's more chaos and fun to be had in Super Mario 3D World with the family. So I'm going with that one as the best family game. Best fighting game. Alright, 
We're going to go with Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Uh, that game has a lot of potential, and a lot of people are having a lot of fun with it. I'm having fun with it. You should definitely go buy it. I'm looking forward to see how far this game goes. Best role-playing game. Now, this one is interesting because this has been the most controversial category because of what was nominated, that obvious one being Cyberpunk 2077. It's also controversial because if you notice, there's one major release here that was not put on this list that everyone's talking about in terms of the Nintendo fans. That's Bravely Default 2. Now, if you look, you got a lot of other games that make sense to be in this category and then Cyberpunk's there. That's where a lot of people are mad right now. So, if we look at our titles here, this one, I feel like, has to go to Monster Hunter Rise. Because this is a game that has great character customization, great progression, and massive multiplayer experiences, which is what best role-playing game is supposed to be. I feel like out of all these titles, Monster Hunter Rise did that, and is still doing that with all the updates that they're doing, not to mention the big expansion pack that's coming out later next year that's going to add so much more content plus story content i think monster hunter rise dominates all of these games here for best role-playing games so i'm gonna vote monster hunter rise now i played cyberpunk 2077 and i tell people that i really like the game and so i know a lot of my friends was expecting me to vote for cyberpunk but monster hunter rise is the only thing that makes sense for this category best action adventure Oh wow, I have a lot of these titles, one that I wish I would have been able to play before this video, that being Guardians of the Galaxy, but I don't think that game would have won for me in this category. I feel like the best adventure game out of this, uh, although I have played Psychonauts, I got it, uh, I have played Ratchet Clank, and I've seen a lot of Resident Evil Village, I feel like the only right answer for this category is Metroid Dread because of how much adventuring you have to do in that game and all the puzzles that you have to solve with going back and forth at previous locations that you did in Metroid Dread. This one just makes the most sense for that. Not to mention the action is great with some of those boss fights. This game makes the most sense for this category, so I'm voting Metroid Dread. Best action game. Now, there's one pick that I feel like we should have seen a lot nominated for. That's Returnal. Returnal is not nominated for Game of the Year, and I think that's a big mistake on the Game Awards part. Uh, this game should have been nominated in other categories, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, Returnal's a great game. Great action game, great rogue game, just great everything in general. There's also Back for Blood here, which is another game I played. There's Deathloop, which I did not get a chance to play, but uh, I didn't play it because they advertised the crap out of that game, and I'm just like, I'm tired of seeing it. I felt like I was in a death loop, to be honest, with the amount of times I was seeing that game. The two games for me I'm going to have to vote for is going to either be Back for Blood or Returnal. Now from a action point, combat is what we're going to be looking at when it comes to that. Back for Blood is great and all, but from a combat standpoint, Returnal crushes it with the amount of guns, the amount of other moves that you can do in the game. There's a lot of strategies that you have to do with that. Also, because of it being a rogue game, I feel like Returnal beats all of these games because of that. Best VR game. So, I actually was supposed to play Hitman 3, but I forgot to do that earlier this year. So, I haven't played any of these games. So, I'm just going to go with Resident Evil 4 because I've heard great things about it and it looks really fun. And I'm hoping to play that later this year. This one, uh, with what it's describing it in the description of recognizing software and hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features and technology and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. So I'm a little bit confused on this. I'm trying to figure out if it means like it pushing the hardware to its limits or does it mean being able to be played by other audiences? Because if we're going by hardware, Ratchet and Clank would easily win that because of everything you can do in that game with the teleportation into other worlds with no loading screens. But if it's talking about wider audiences, then Guardians of the Galaxy would make sense for that because everyone can play that, they'll know what that is, it fits everyone. 
So I don't know what they meant. I'm gonna assume they mean by a technology standpoint in terms of pushing the hardware to the limits. So I'm gonna go with Ratchet and Clank for uh, the best for that because that game did take the PS5 to the limits. Best community support. I've said it many times before, you gotta give Epic Games props where it's due. They have been able to put so much support into Fortnite. It's actually insane the amount of stuff that's in Fortnite right now. I just saw that they put Naruto in the game. They had Rick and Morty this year. They have DC. They have Marvel. They have like every property you can think of. They are supporting that game like crazy. They're doing it better than other companies would support their games. And they're still updating it. This map gets updated like every three months, I think. There's new stuff every single week. This game is being supported like crazy with new content. So I feel like the obvious pick has to be Fortnite. So I'm going to vote Fortnite. Now, I will say I think No Man's Sky deserves more recognition for this because No Man's Sky, if you saw what that game looked like when it came out, it's definitely gotten like 30 times better. So I think No Man's Sky deserves more attention for this, but Fortnite definitely deserves this award. Best mobile game. Okay, I didn't play Pokemon Unite on mobile, but I played it on the Switch and I had fun. It was a little era where, you know, I played it for a bit and just like everyone else, they stopped playing like I did. So I'm gonna say Pokemon Unite won for this. Best indie game. Okay, I gotta go with 12 minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, this game was absolutely crazy when I played it. Uh, I think it's really cool how many different endings, how many other routes you can take with this game, how many deaths that you can die in with this game. The amount of other routes that you can take in 12 minutes is quite incredible. It's also really incredible to see an indie game get the type of cast that it got, like William Dafoe. It's crazy that an indie game was able to afford these people. Like Des Daisy Ridley, she's in the movie. I, I think it's really crazy what this game did. Uh, the ending was a little like mm, for me, um, because it just it, it screwed up and I wasn't really expecting it. And it's kind of disgusting, but the game was fun. It was just that ending like really threw me off and I really didn't like that. If it wasn't for the ending, I feel like 12 minutes would have been my game of the year. If I'm being honest with you, uh, but for what 12 minutes did it should be recognized more and i hope it wins this award because i want to see more games do stuff like this in terms of having so many different options and having to go through these other options to progress in the story it was really cool what this game did for that it's just the ending was ugh. best ongoing it's gonna be fortnite it, it has to be fortnite uh same things that I said in the past, the community support, the ongoing updates, it, it just makes sense for it to be Fortnite. Games for Impact. While I did not play Life is Strange True Colors, a lot of the game was spoiled for me and that game will have an impact for people if they play it. Because there are things that people can relate to in that game. Uh, I don't know much about these other games, but I'm going to go with Life is Strange True Colors just because of what I know about that game. Alright, best performance. Ah, uh, this one's kind of hard uh, because I really want Giancarlo to win. Uh, I think he's just such an amazing actor. Uh, but I didn't play any of these games that people were nominated for, so I don't feel right voting for it. Uh, but I'm still going to go with Giancarlo. That dude is an amazing actor. Uh, <laughs> if you've not seen a lot of his acting and his other stuff than just Far Cry 6, definitely check him out. Uh, I mean, Breaking Bad, while I haven't seen that show... Uh, I know a lot of people will recognize him from Breaking Bad, so I'm going to go with John Carlo for best performance. Best audio design. So Returnal, with how it does its audio, I think is really crazy, and uh, not to mention with the controller, you can actually hear audio. Like, If you play the game, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to spoil too much, uh, but with how that game is, the audio design, this is definitely Returnal's best win. This better win this award it has the best audio design best score in music so this one's gonna be interesting i have heard the game version of guardians of the galaxy uh, its soundtrack uh it, it's a good soundtrack and i actually really like cyberpunk's soundtrack 
I haven't seen the other game's soundtrack, so it's gonna be tied between these two guys. I gotta be honest, I gotta go with Cyberpunk on this. I know a lot of people are gonna very be mad at me on that one, uh, but Cyberpunk's music actually had me Google some of the soundtrack and made me listen to it, so uh, I liked some of the songs that was played in Cyberpunk. And also fits the narrative of Cyberpunk. It does a good job of being in that Cyberpunk world, I feel like. I, I think it did an amazing job, but so did Guardians of the Galaxy, because the music from that game is pretty good. Uh, but I'm gonna have to go with Cyberpunk on this. Best Art Direction. Uh, this actually has to be Resident Clank. While I haven't played the game with what it did, again, with the PlayStation 5 hardware, and the direction it went, it makes sense for it to be Ratchet and Clank because that did the best in my opinion. Best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. <sighs> so I haven't played any of these. Um, so I'm just gonna go with Guardians of the Galaxy. Best game direction. Um, this one's actually gonna be difficult. Uh, Returnal's the only one I played out of these five. But we got Ratchet and Clank in this, and I think that game has really good game direction, but so does Returnal. I feel like Returnal does an amazing job of telling what it's supposed to be. A lot of these games that you play don't do the greatest job of doing what it's supposed to be. Returnal does it best on what it's supposed to be. Uh, so I, I feel like it's got to be Returnal on this, in my opinion. Game of the Year. Wow, there is some interesting nominees here, but I'm going to be honest, I really feel like Returnal should have been nominated here. I'm a bit upset that it wasn't because a lot of, I mean, I guess it makes sense. A lot of people didn't get a chance to play Returnal, but I feel Returnal deserves to be here. We got Deathloop. I'll play it eventually, it's just that game was advertised everywhere and I would just want to be done hearing about the game. Takes Two is something I really, really want to play, I just don't have anyone to play it with. Metroid Dread, we'll get into that later. Psychonauts 2 is something I should have played, I have it on Xbox Game Pass, I just didn't get a chance to play it. Ratchet & Clank is in a similar situation, I should have played that game. Resident Evil Village is another game I should have played. The only one I actually played here was Metroid Dread. But honestly, Metroid Dread was going to be my game of the year either way because when I played it, I knew immediately that it was going to be my game of the year. Just because of how the game is, how addicting the game was, how fun it was, how everything about the game was amazing. I knew Metroid Dread was going to be my game of the year when I finished playing the game. Now the question is, can it beat all of these games? Um, I don't think so. I don't think Metroid Dread is actually going to win Game of the Year this year. Uh, I feel like what's going to win is probably either Psychonauts 2 or Ratchet & Clank. I will be presently surprised if Metroid Dread beats all of these games. I hope Metroid Dread wins, but I don't think it's going to happen. Well guys, that was my nominees for the year. I want to know what you guys think. I know I didn't do a good job of playing all these games this year, so hopefully next year we'll do way better. I want to know what you guys think though. What are you voting for as game of the year? And was there a disagreement on my list that I voted for? I, I want to know what you guys think just in general. Let's have a whole debate in the comments down below. Well guys, I've been talking for way too much. Make sure to check out my Twitter, which is in the description below. Check out my Twitch, because we're moving all my streams there, and we're bringing back the streams actually next week. So definitely check my Twitch down, which is in the description below. Check out my Discord server, check out the podcast that I'm a part of. Check all of that stuff out in the description below. We're also going to be streaming the Game Awards this year. We're going to do a pre-show also, so yeah, be there. It's going to be exciting. I will see you guys all in the very next video. Peace.